Skip. Well, uh, hello, Redland family and friends of all things. Uh, we're at home. Obviously, we postponed church tonight because of the inclement weather. I think we made the right choice. It's raining a lot. and uh, But our power went out about 15, 20 minutes ago here at on Jasmine Hill. The power went out in the Jasmine Hill area. So we, <laughs> we've been uh, running around trying to find uh, a battery operated lighting so we could uh, somehow do a short Bible study. Hopefully many of you are joining us. You know, we won't be doing the six o'clock family Bible study at the church, so we're doing the five, five o'clock now. So uh, thank you for joining me. Uh, if the picture's a little distorted or if you can't see me, we'll, we apologize for that. And uh, it's just the way it is. Uh, I was really expecting the lights to come back on once we had set everything up and at least gotten some light arranged through flashlights and fluorescent battery operated anyway. We thought it would come back on, but it did. But anyway, thank you. Thank you for joining us. I uh, want to remind the ch parents and children about uh, Children's Church. Uh, again, during worship from 1030 to 1130, we have Children's Church. Uh, and invite the children up through fifth grade to join our, our workers over in the Children's Wing for Children's Church. I want to remind you Friday morning at 9, uh, our, Bible, our little Bible devotion on Friday mornings. And, um, and also, we, we are making some plans for some October events. And uh, one is at the end of the month, we're doing the Fall Festival. I believe it's on Wednesday night, the 28th. So, uh, parents, if you want to go ahead and circle that on your calendar at the church on the 28th, we'll be doing, some, doing some kind of trunk or treat festival kind of thing so we would tell you more about that in in the days to come um, look forward to being in church on sunday i will tell you that we'll be back in the book of philippians uh, for the last time uh, this sunday we'll be in philippians 4 and uh, then uh, the following sunday i'm pretty sure i'm going to go ahead and start a series uh, about again the prophetic end of day so to speak on some prophecy uh, I have my little coin here uh, you may not can see it but it's a silver coin from uh, a country called Armenia and uh, they believe that's the area on Mount Ararat where uh, where Noah's Ark is and so their coin is a Noah's Ark coin it has a emblem of Noah's Ark anyway, but on the front of it, I carried it in this little plastic, and, and I quote Matthew 24, 37 that says, Jesus says, just as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the coming of the Son of Man. And many of us have been studying that on Wednesday nights as it was in the days of Noah. And Jesus says, much like that, it's going to be like the days of Noah when Jesus Christ comes for the second time. And I need to remind you, for those of us that trust the Bible, seven years before Jesus' physical return, he's going to come in the air seven years before that and rapture the church. It's those kind of things I want to talk about. So Sunday week, uh, I'll start probably a series on Bible prophecy. Let me give you something to think about. If we're living in the last days, and we think we are, obviously, never before have we been in such a... Uh, a pregnant prophetic uh, spirit you know you, you read the paper you hear the news and it's like we're writing the book of Revelation well if it's true and, and I think it is I mean of course I believe that for you know for 40 years but have you ever thought about this um, the Antichrist could be alive right now you know because he is a man I mean, he's indwelt by Satan, and Satan takes him over. But it's possible that the Antichrist is, is alive right now. Just think about stuff like that. Anyway, I want to read to you out of one of my favorite chapters in the Bible. This is out of the book of 2 Corinthians, chapter 5. So if you have your Bible nearby, and if you have lights at your house, uh, turning your Bibles with me to 2 Corinthians, chapter 5. And... Um, I want to give you a little thought. You know, I, one of my favorite New Testament miracles that Jesus performed, 
2 Corinthians 5, by the way, was on Bartimaeus, uh, called Blind Bartimaeus. And, and I think it's recorded maybe in Mark chapter 10. And uh, Jesus heals Bartimaeus. And, uh, and you know, Jesus, you know, he cries out, Jesus, thou son of God, have mercy on me. And Jesus stops and calls Bartimaeus. And there's a great picture of repentance there. Bartimaeus believes that he's going to receive from Jesus life or healing, maybe even spiritual healing, not just physical healing. And he jumps up and leaves all of his begging stuff, his cloak and all of his money that he'd been begging for. He, he jumps up and he immediately rushes to Jesus. Well, after Jesus received, gives him his sight and heals him, the Bible says, I believe it's in Mark 10, 50, 52, and it says, <clears throat> after Jesus healed him, and he followed Jesus in the way. Well, folks, that, that's true for every born-again believer. We follow Jesus in the way. And because we're on the way, we're following the Lord Jesus Christ, the life that we're living now is far different than the life we had when we were blind. You think about how, how transformational Bartimaeus was. Blind to being able to see and following Jesus on the way. That's exactly the picture of the new birth, of what it means to be born again, to be a new creation. We were blind spiritually. Jesus gave us sight. And what do we do? We follow Jesus on the way. Now, it's, our lives are changed. You know, I mentioned this Sunday, there's all these doctrines we talk about. Justification is one of them. But we don't often talk about regeneration. Uh, yes, we are justified by faith. We are, we are saved by grace through faith. But we're also regenerated, which means that God birthed us. He gave, he gave us at salvation. He gives us life. It's a new genesis, a new life. I think about Daniel in, in the Old Testament when, when Daniel was taken captive uh, by Nebuchadnezzar and to, 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 to Babylon. And it says in Daniel chapter 1 that, that Daniel purposed in his heart not to defile himself with, with the king's meat. And, and for those of us that know Jesus Christ and are made new, and we're following Jesus on the way. That's the kind of commitment we're to make. We're to make a commitment that we're not going to defile ourselves with what this world offers us as the world tries to squeeze us in its mold. Well, this is what Paul happens to be mentioning uh, in, in 2 Corinthians chapter 5. And let me just read a couple of verses. I do want to get to my favorite verse in my I tell people the first time I ever preached, I preached out of 2 Corinthians 5, and it was verse 16 and 17. I'll read that in a minute. But this is beginning at verse 1. 2 Corinthians 5 says, For we know that if the tent that is our earthly home is destroyed, we have a building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. For in this tent we groan, and he's talking to believers. We groan. I mean, it's, we're, it's, it's a spiritual battle. It's a physical battle. Longing to put on our heavenly dwelling. So since we've been saved, there's this battle. We, we're in this tent. It is temporary, but we struggle. We have the desire to put on our heavenly dwelling. To, you know, absent in the body's present with the Lord. That's what we're hoping for. We're, we're desiring that. That we would, you know, to, die, to live as Christ, Paul said, to, die, to live as Christ, to die as gain. So we have this, we struggle in this flesh. Then he says, for in this, in this, uh, in this uh, tent we, we groan, longing to put on our heavenly dwelling. If indeed, by putting it on, we may not be found naked. He's talking about being clothed with the righteousness of Christ. For while we are still in this tent, we groan being burdened, not that we would be unclothed, but that we would be further clothed, so that what is, what is mortal, and we're in the mortal flesh, may be swallowed up by life. 
So there's the, we're mortal. We're still in, in human form. We're not immortal. That means, you know, glorified bodies. We're mortal. But in this mortal body, because we've met Jesus Christ, our mortality, God, the God's Word says He wants to swallow that up with spiritual life. You know, we think about uh, Jesus came. You know, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Uh, Christ came to give us life and give it to us more abundantly. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, but whosoever believes shall not perish but everlasting life. Um, this is the condemnation that lights come into the world and men love darkness rather than light. light. We have a life. And this life that you and I are living in Christ uh, crushes the mortal body. It, we're living a spiritual life. But we have to do this battle. And that's why Paul says, for we are always of good courage. We know that while we're at home in the body, we are away from the Lord. For we walk by faith and not by sight. Yes, we are of good courage, and we would much rather be away from the body and at home with Jesus. We, we have to walk by faith and not by sight uh, because we're in this mortal body. So our, our daily lives are based on, without faith, it's impossible to please God. So Paul's talking about this, the tent that we're in, the dwelling, the eternal dwelling place that we're going to inherit one day. But in between, we're living out the Christian faith. And he says that life, our life in Christ, swallows up mortality. So we live the abundant life. We live the eternal life that Christ came to give us, even while we're struggling in this tent. But the main thing I, I love about 2 Corinthians chapter 5 is is the 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 mention of what it means to be born again and what it means to be transformed by the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. This is where the, the Bible describes us as new creations. Uh, I was reading about Zacchaeus, and uh, we all know the story of Zacchaeus was the little man and couldn't see Jesus, so he climbed up in the sycamore tree. And uh, Luke chapter 19 talks about Zacchaeus. But what we often don't talk about is when Zacchaeus met Jesus. Ooh, that was close, wasn't it? The dogs did that. When Zacchaeus met Jesus, he made a confession. He said, half my goods I'll give to the poor. And then he says, if I've defrauded anybody, I will pay them back fourfold. And folks, that is a sign that, that Zacchaeus' heart had been transformed by the power of God. Well, listen to what the Bible says about our salvation. So, so Paul's mentioned that, that, our, that mortality, we're living in a mortal world, that our lives, it's swallowed up by life in Christ. So we are able to overcome and not be concerned about being mortal. We're more concerned about living the abundant life in Jesus Christ. Well, listen to listen to, to 2 Corinthians chapter 5. My dogs are acting up. Um, look, listen to verse 16 and 17, and I'll, I'll close. I'm going to give you three things about the new life. It says, uh, it says, From now on, therefore, we regard no one according to the flesh, even though we regarded Christ according to the flesh, but we don't know him in the flesh any longer. Therefore, so it's not about, you know, it, it, Paul was talking about people groups and, and, you know, we don't look at people by what uh, culture they come from thinking whether they can be saved. It's not a matter. We're all mortal sinners. We're all wicked sinners and we all need to be saved, so we all need to hear the gospel. But then here's what he says. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. I love this. If anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. So what Paul says is for those of us that, that the earlier statement that life has swallowed up mortality, that, that our life now is about Jesus Christ, 
he describes this life as one of a new creation. Uh, the, the idea is the same words used here was used of as in when God created when in the New Testament when it speaks of creation this is the same word when God made something out of nothing he his divine power did that well in salvation God through the power of the Holy Spirit and the authority of his word makes us brand new creations something that never existed before he takes you and makes you a new you and I want you to think about this that being true because we're a new creation in Christ we have an undeniable likeness of Jesus Christ I mean we're we're a, you know Ephesians 2 says we're created in Christ Jesus unto good works so in this new creation, God made us brand new. But who did he make us like? He made us like Christ. He put Christ's spirit inside of us. That's part of the new creation. So in this new creation, there's an undeniable likeness to Jesus Christ. Well, not only is there an undeniable likeness to Christ, but in a new creation, I think that there's unending fellowship. You know, because we've been transformed by the power of God, uh, we have this unending fellowship with the one who made us. Our creator has recreated us. The, the last Adam has now made us in his image. And so, so we have an unending fellowship. So think about this. As a new creation, uh, there's an undeniable likeness to Jesus Christ because of a new creation. Because I'm a new creation, there's an unending, unending fellowship. And the third thing I want you to think about, because I'm a new creation, I'm unashamed about proclamation. That, that, what I'm talking about is because God's made me new, I don't mind telling people about being made a new creation in Jesus Christ. And notice what the text says, Behold, uh, old things have passed away. Behold, all things have have become new. You know, it's interesting that we, we, we now, because we're new creations in a fallen world, our whole lives are about spiritual warfare, about a spiritual battle. It, when Paul mentions the principalities and powers and the spirits and, and, and the fallen angels, that those are the forces that we now do battle with. We're, we're not at home in this world. We're away from home. We're foreigners and strangers now, and we're on our way home. We're in a tent now. One day we're going to have a home. And Jesus mentioned that, you know, I go to fair place for you. So one day we're going to go home, but right now we're not home. But while we're here, we're doing battle. And I think about what Paul said, you know, put on the whole armor of God. Two things I want to mention to you about that armor, and I'll stop, is at because we're new creations, he talks about putting on the breastplate of righteousness. And the idea of a breastplate, it is, it's the Greek word thorax, which is for us, it's, you know, it's our bottom of our neck to the below our, our ribs. And, and literally, if you study the word thorax, it means a heart protector. It's, it's a cage that protects our hearts. Well, we think about putting on the breastplate of righteousness. We, we want to pursue Christ. We want to live by faith, walk by faith, and that protects our hearts. But another thing that he says is, and take, he says, and take the shield of faith. You know, we walk by faith and not by sight. That's what he said in 2 Corinthians. Take the shield of faith with which you can extinguish the fiery darts of the devil. Well, the idea of that shield, you know, we don't think about this. That shield, the root word for the word shield is the word door. That's telling you how big the shield was. And that shield was specially designed with certain layers of rubber and, and wood. And what it would do is it would catch the darts in warfare, the spears that would be shot, it would, it would stop those and it would extinguish the, the fiery uh, arrows that would be shot at you from the enemy. Well, that's what Paul's saying is that 
we, we put on the breastplate of righteousness because we're new creations in Christ. But also we take the shield of faith. We have to walk by faith. And that, we have to take it. We have to take it. We have to pick it up and take it. And we have to hold this shield of faith to extinguish. So we have to walk by faith. As new creations, we have to walk by faith and not by sight. I was reading an article about history that said that one Roman soldier, they found his, uh, I mean, he died in battle, but they found the shield, and it had 221 separate uh, arrows from the enemy, over 200 arrows from the enemy because he had his shield. Well, folks, we need to take the shield of faith and walk and follow the Lord Jesus Christ in this wicked world. Are you like Bartimaeus? Christ has given us sight, spiritual sight. So what are we going to do? Jesus, have mercy on me. Christ had mercy on us. So what are we going to do? Well, we're going to do what Bartimaeus did. We're going to follow Jesus Christ on the way. Don't forget, you know, everybody in Christ. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. I hope you have a great evening. Stay safe. We'll see you Friday morning at 9 a.m. God bless.